The CES Innovation Award, IF Design Award, 2022 Best Ultra Short Throw Projector Award by Projector Central, just to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you guys to the four movie theater, the ultra short throw projector worthy of the name theater. In early 2023, I went to CES 23 and I was just, you know, gazing around, looking at all the cool stuff because that's what they do there at CES 2023. It was a good time, man. I would love to do it again in 2024. I happened to run by this, uh, this vendor called 4Movie and I saw all these projectors they had. They had a few small ones, a few portable ones, and they all looked great. But in this little room they had set up, it was like a little boxy kind of room and they had a 100 inch screen in there. And I looked in there, I was like, dang, that is a great picture. And I happened to notice that the projector was not coming from behind me or on the side. It was sitting right in front of that 100 inch screen. And I was like, that is a short, uh, not a short throw, an ultra short throw projector. These things are capable of providing like a 100 to 120 inch image from like eight to 12 inches away. That's incredible, man. That is an incredible feat in today's technology. So I had a chat with some of the reps there and I was like, hey, can I get one of these over at New Stuff TV so I can show the New Stuff TV fans what's up with short throw projection? Cause I've never had one on this channel before. So here we are experiencing ultra short throw on this channel for the very first time. They managed to pack a lot of technology into this relatively small package. We're talking 4K laser projection with Dolby Vision technology for a high dynamic range display of videos. ALPD 4.0 RGB plus laser technology for brighter, more vivid color display. It's even got MEMC technology, which ensures the smooth playback of all your media. This is also the first certified Android TV 11 projector out there. That means you're gonna get Chromecast built in and your Google Assistant built in, so you can actually integrate this thing with all your existing devices easily. This also means you're gonna get support from more than 5,000 Google Play apps like Disney+, Plus, HBO, Hulu, and YouTube. Now, if you actually wanna take a deep dive into some specs, go ahead and pause the video right here. Now, for those of y'all ready to move on to my field trip around this thing, I wanna go ahead and get started with these Bowers and Wilkins speakers in the front. Anytime you hear the name Bowers and Wilkins, you know you're getting dedicated premium sound quality. You're also going to get support for Dolby Atmos, which creates a cinema level surround sound for an immersive sound experience, all coming from one unit. The top of the projector continues the sleek modern design. You'll see your power button there, a panel where your body sensors are, and then in a the little pocket, you'll see your little laser. That's where your projection comes out of. Going directly to the back, you're gonna see what I love to see on the back of projectors. That's HDMI inputs galore. You got three of them sitting there. HDMI one, two, and three, and three happens to have arc support. You got two USBs, you got a line out, which is a 3.5 millimeter. You got your optical cable input. You got your LAN input, and then you got your power input. Now, in the case of the LAN or the Ethernet input, this is something I love to see on projectors. Unfortunately, we only see it in more high-end stuff like the uh, theater right here. But man, it's so good to have that LAN input because yes, we do have Android TV 11 built in and it has Wi-Fi support. But what if you want that streamlined, like that hard connection? That way you have no hangups, no stutters, no lags, no nothing, man. You want your internet on point. You want the full delivery of your internet. Now you can get it because you got a LAN input right there on the back. If you're sitting on the back side of the projector and then you look to the left hand side of it, you're going to see this big open grill and that's going to have two cooling fans in it because yeah, you're pumping out 2800 lumens. So this thing's going to need some nice cool air flowing through it. This is your intake side. If you keep scooting to the left a little bit, you're going to see another one of those Bowers and Wilkins speakers. On the bottom side of that, you're going to see a little switch. That's going to be for your mic mute and on. This way you can actually turn it off if you don't want it listening to you all the time. Then you're going to see a little rotary knob right there. And if you keep moving that thing enough, you'll see that the legs or the little feet at the bottom are going to extend out. This way you can level it on the left hand side. On the opposite side of the theater, you're going to see another big open grill with two more fans on the inside. This is going to be your exhaust side of the theater. And over to the right side of that, you're going to see another Bowers and Wilkins speaker, followed by on the bottom, another little rotary knob so you can adjust those legs on the opposite side of the theater. If you flip the theater over and look at the underside, you're gonna see four little screw inlets. This is gonna give you more versatility because now you can actually mount this thing to your ceiling. And last but not least, they throw in a remote so you can access all the cool features the theater has to offer. They even have a dedicated Google Assistant button and a dedicated YouTube button. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of talking about specs and stuff. I'm ready to see this thing in 4K laser action. 
All right, now it's time to get into some 4K Ultra short throw goodness. But first, I gotta check out this feature. Hey Google, show me some Moto GP clips. All right, there you go, right there, it just pops up. So you don't even have to use the dedicated Google Assistant button on the remote if you don't want to, you can just speak to it uh, at will. But like I said, you can actually turn the microphones off on the, home, on the uh, projector itself if you want to, if you don't want it listening to you the entire time, you can have your privacy. But let's just find something to watch, man. Let me see here. Um, let's see, something with some action in it. Let's see here, top 10 fastest bikes in the world. That's what's up, let's see that. Click on that, see how fast it pops up. My internet's working great today. So yeah, I got, oh, look at those colors. Wow, the blue is blueing. And man, that is a beautiful bike. All right, so right now you're just seeing those colors. They're very, very accurate colors as far as I'm concerned. And the, oh, the I, I'm rendered speechless. <laughs> It just kind of came at me, man. But I do want to talk about how beautiful and sharp this picture is. You see how sharp that picture is right now. I wish you were sitting here with me on the couch because you would be just as taken aback as I am. The colors are really popping, but the good news is they're not oversaturated. This one's done very, very uh, nicely because you don't really have too much customization access in the colorization of your content. So that's actually good that they got it right right out of the box. You do get your typical Android TV 11 settings, which are sitting right here in front of you, but there's also a dedicated button for the projector settings, which I'm pushing right now. Then it goes into this, um, this little screen right here, and then you get uh, execute focus over there at the top left, and then you get keystone correction. Let's go into execute focus. It's not an auto focus, so you do have to kind of fine tune it yourself. And you can see there are all four corners actually focus very well. I did have some trouble uh, dealing with the upper right hand corner, and I actually ended up getting it. Now let's go back and I'll take you into the keystone correction. It does not have automatic keystone, but this is something new to me. You have eight point or four point keystone correction. I wanted to fine tune mine, so you have the eight point co uh, correction going here. That's why you see those four dots. You can actually just kind of pick a dot and you see how I'm making it kind of curve like that? That's because that's eight, uh, eight point keystone correction. You normally can't do that. I've never seen this before, but I really like having it on this projector because setting up an ultra short throw projector can be a little tricky because you're so close to the screen and you could get some distortion. So this eight point and fine tuning, uh, eight point keystone correction and fine tuning really comes in handy. So hopefully you've been looking at the upper middle part of the screen where I've been manipulating that. I just think it's a really handy feature, especially with a, an ultra short throw projector. I'm gonna lock it in right about there. And then we're gonna escape out of that back to the home screen. Cause I wanna show you Creed 2 because most of us are actually gonna be watching movies on our uh, 4K ultra short throw projector. So as we sit here and watch Adonis Creed get his face pummeled in, you'll see that the color here is really brilliant. The red is redding, the blues are bluing. Oh man, look at that. Dang, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would not want to take a punch from anyone named Drago. Anyhow, you can see the skin color as well uh, on both athletes. You see we got all that contrast. All the blacks are really, really deep and black but you still get that navy blue down there in her dress. It was popping out. It, it actually cut past that scene. But when it gets into these dark scenes, you can still see the contrast there between a navy blue and a deep black. And that's something that's really hard to pull off, especially in projection. But that's one of the benefits of having 4K UHD. Now you gamers might get pretty excited over this. Once you plug in your PlayStation or your Xbox, you're gonna figure out quickly that this has automatic low latency mode, meaning that as soon as you turn on that game, it automatically just switches into low latency so you don't have to worry about any lag or anything like that in your gaming performance. Now in the world of audio, when you hear the name Bowers and Wilkins, it's almost synonymous with the words audio quality and they don't disappoint here in the four movie theater either. So inside of the unit, you got all those drivers on the front and on the sides, and they do a great job of presenting and projecting the sound. There is no subwoofer here, but you do get nice rich bass coming out of that particular unit. But where the sound really shines is projection. It has those drivers on the side and in the front. And if you're watching a movie with maybe some bats or something like that, you know, where little sounds are coming from around you, maybe from the rear on the side, you're going to really get that effect 
of those bats or insects or cars going by because they do such a great job of throwing the sound with Dolby Atmos and things of that nature. Now, as far as my first ultra short throw projector experience, four movie did not disappoint. In fact, they delivered in a big 101 inch way. Man, look at this picture. It is beautiful, man. And I'm really excited about watching more content on this projector. All right, boys and girls, I can't stress enough. If you're gonna go out and spend all this money on a brand new 4K laser ultra short throw projector, you've got to get yourself the proper screen because it doesn't make sense to have all that quality being projected if you're gonna have washout from all the ambient lighting in your room or if the screen just doesn't quite match up to the quality because the quality that you get from the projector is gonna be reflected by the quality of the screen and its materials. So I wanna introduce you to this Elite Screens Kestrel Tab Tension 2 with CLR3 100 inch fluorizing electric screen. First of all, when you're using an ultra short throw projector, it's very close to the surface that it's being projected upon. That means you gotta have that screen nice and taut because it's so close and it will expose any imperfections on that surface, such as wrinkles or waves or cracks in the wall or anything like that. So that's why I'm using this tab tension screen because I need that surface nice, taut, and flat. CLR is actually an acronym for ceiling light rejection. That means this particular screen is blocking up to 90% of the overhead ambient lighting because I don't want it there. They actually pulled this off and I'll tell you how. First, it's actually two layers that are working together. The reflective layer, which is the bottom, and the absorbent layer, which is the top of the sawtooth structure. This is how the screen allows the ultra short throw projector to perform at its best. Not to mention the viewing angles allows the viewers to see a clean and clear picture with equal brightness from any angle. The model I'm using in this video is the 101 inch electric fluorizing, but they have several different other options you can choose from, including a 121 inch and even black and white. So my advice is if you're taking a serious look into the full movie theater, your next stop should be EliteScreens.com so you can check out one of these Tab Tension CLR3 screens to pair it up with. All I can tell you right now is I'm no expert in anything, especially boxing, but I can tell when somebody's getting their face bashed in. And I know Creed is actually going to win, but he is getting himself handed to himself right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this movie. But before I get out of here, make sure y'all keep being good to each other and I'll see you when I see you. Hey, Wilson, hold up, man. Hold on. Check this cat out, man. He just sat through this whole video from beginning to end. He didn't hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. Man, he didn't even hit the little like button that they got on the little thing down there. Yeah, that little thing right there. These guys are something else, man. Let's go to lunch.